Okay, Lamar Whitehead is back in the news again, and of course, has gone viral among the so-called black Americans. You know what I find interesting is no other group of people rejoice at the downfall of somebody, regardless of how crooked or fraudulent they may appear. I've never seen no other group, no other race of people that celebrate as much as the so-called black Americans at the downfall of someone that looks like them. For some reason, people seem to be hating on this man just because of how he dressed, just because of how what he wears. And of course, like Brother Polite, like Sarnetta, like Dr. Umar Johnson, they labeled him as a fraud. Of course, black men can't do anything without being labeled as a fraud. But yet, Bishop Lamar Whitehead has done nothing different than what the average YouTuber does. Now, people refer to him as a fraud because of how he dressed, because of the money that he allegedly have. Somebody even posted a video of him asking for donations. And they said that he was begging and people love to attack the so-called black pastor. Now, the Bible talks about how there are false prophets, false preachers and teachers. We know this. This is not an old thing. This is not a new thing, rather. And it just doesn't happen among black preachers. We find this happen among even white preachers. But you don't see white people going viral talking about their white pastors regardless of how fraudulent they may be. Billy Graham is one of them. But we don't hear them talking about that because it really means nothing. If you don't believe in what that man teaches, if you don't agree with this man, just move on about your business, especially if you did never donate it to this man. If you never donated any money to this man, why are you so concerned about what he's got in his pockets? Why are you so concerned about his car seats and how his car seat look? Now, Bishop Lamar, he, of course, was allegedly arrested by FBI. Now he's out of jail. He made videos. And of course, He's feeding the wolves because the wolves are now reposting his videos and still referring to this man as a fraud. And it's interesting because a lot of these so-called YouTubers that's attacking Bishop Lamar are people that have been incarcerated themselves. These are people that sold drugs in their own communities. I'll repeat that. They sold drugs in their own communities. They assisted in destroying their communities by selling drugs. Some are even burglars. Some had even murdered someone that looks like them, but yet they're pointing fingers at Bishop Lamar. So that's hypocritical. And if you want to talk about him taking up donations, what he does is no different than what YouTubers does. Hit that cash app. Oh yeah, a lot of y'all talk about hit the cash app. Uh, what's that other thing that you guys got? Um, when you go live, 
and you're asking people to hit that donation button? Oh yeah, and then what about that one uh, site that you guys go and you take your clothes off and you prostitute yourself? You know, and you say, go to my, what is that thing called? I can't even think of the name of that thing, but um, Tommy Sotomayor has one. You know, like where, you know, go to my, go to my page and subscribe and you got to pay to see somebody either take off their clothes or commit sexual acts. But yet, you want to point fingers at Bishop Lamar. See, this excites you to see a, the downfall of another man. This excites you to see the downfall of another man. So, regardless of what goes on with this man now, when it comes to these allegations, I've learned to tone them out. I don't listen to them. Because, yeah, there are fraudulent people out there. But remember, Polite, Sarnetta, and a host of other YouTubers, even Hassan Campbell, was accused of being fraudulent. Anybody black, especially black men, they don't talk about this with the Cynthia G's and the black females that say, hit my cash app. Donate to my channel. Go to my OnlyFans. That's the page. The OnlyFans. Go to my OnlyFans page. But yet, you guys want to talk about this man the same way you did Kevin Samuels. So, it's none of my business what this man does. Apparently, they let him go. And they have to fight it in court. This is no different than a female saying that a guy touched her inappropriately. This is not new. Females always lie on men, especially when there's money involved. Especially when they think that they won the lottery. They think that if they sue this guy, take this guy to court, they're going to get paid. And then you got YouTubers for content, for views, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification, go to my OnlyFans page, donate to my channel. We all do it. This man decided to go and say, well, regardless of what this man's past is, everybody's just about everybody got a past. Fortunately, I don't really have a past. I don't have no criminal record. I don't have a criminal background. And even though I have no criminal background, I still don't talk about people like this. Because there's nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. What Bishop Lamore Whitehead does that's his business. He has to answer to God. But I've never seen any other race of people that rejoice in the downfall of each other. That's why the so-called black community will go nowhere. You will always remain on the bottom because you're like crabs in the barrel. As soon as, soon as you see one Crawling up, you guys decided to want to pull him back down. And let me tell you something about the church. Since a lot of y'all like to talk about preachers and the cars that preachers drive and the houses that they live in and the planes that they drive. Now, there are preachers that get greedy. But the Bible says, and this is not justifying fraudulent people. The Bible says that a workman is worthy of his hire. I remember when, and I told this story before, when I first got into the ministry, I spoke at this church, a very lucrative church. And whenever I stood up to speak, I never stood up to speak for money. 
or for an offer. And I wasn't, I wasn't used to that. Okay, because I was always used to working and doing for myself, earning my own key. So I stood up and I did the sermon. And after the church service was over, they took up an offering. And I'm sitting there looking, they took this offering up. And this is the kind of church that whatever they take up for the speaker, they took up a speaker's offering. Whatever they took up, the church didn't take anything for itself. They put it in a big manila, uh, manila envelope and, and handed it right to the preacher in front of everybody. Of course, they wrote down how much they taken up because they have to document that. You know, they have to keep track of the money that comes in the church. So I recall this church took up a huge offering for me. And when they when he handed me that manila envelope and he gave me the last words to speak, I stood up and I was closing out the service. Before I closed out, you know, I thanked the people, you know, and yada, yada, yada. And then I turned around and said, I want to donate this to the young people's department. So I took the offering and I gave it back. I donated it back to the young people's department. After church, the preacher walked up to me and he said to me, the pastor of that church told me, don't ever give an offering back. He said, because there are people that feel in their heart that they will be blessed when they give the man of God an offering. And he said, I understand why you did it. It's a good thing you gave it back to the children, the young people's department. He said, but there's people that's upset now because they gave that money to you. They didn't give it to the young people's department. They gave it to you. He says, so there are people that are offended because you gave that offering back. He said, never give an offering back, he said, because it offends the people. After this preacher finished talking to me, I got ready to walk out the door. This lady walked up to me, went to shake my hand, and she put money in my hand. And she told me, she said, I want you to have this. She said, I didn't put it in the offering because I wanted to make sure that you got it. So there are people that give freely from their heart. So if Bishop Lamar Whitehead, if his parishioners are giving him that money, if they, if, and this people that would give up their mortgage, they would give up their, their, uh, their retirement pension just because it's given to the church. Not so much as the preacher, but this people that give their, give a lot of money to the church because I think somewhere within themselves, they're trying to make good for something that they've done in their life. That's their way, and it happens with so many people, that's their way of trying to buy their way into paradise. Yes, there are people that give to the church or give to preachers because they think they're in good grace with God, right? They're trying to buy their way into heaven. But again, there are preachers that get greedy, especially if they're in a church that believes in taking care of their pastor. So not only this pastor is getting, getting a salary, and I know pastors that were getting uh, 200 some grand, $250,000 $250, a year as a salary, plus the church pays for their house. Gives them a house, gives them an allowance every month for their home. The deacons will come to their house, shower their snow, take care of their lawn, you know, do work around their house. That's what the people chose to do. The pastor never asked for that. This one church, that's what they do. They took good care of that preacher because that preacher is not only teaching and preaching on Sunday mornings, but yet when they get sick, that preacher, although that's his job and he's not doing it to get paid, that preacher visits them 
even on their sick bed. They look to that church to bury them. When they run into hardship, the church is supposed to help them out, especially if they pay their tithe and offering. See, the Bible says bring all the tithe into the storehouse. And I know there was a big debate over tithe, but it says bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. In other words, that if you running low on your rent, your light's about to get put out in the middle of the wintertime, you're paying your tithes. You should be able to go to the church and the church help you out until you're able to get back on your feet. That's what the Catholic Church does. And see, that's why you can go to Catholic Charities and get that free stuff. Because people donate to the Catholic Church. That's why the Catholic Church is so big. And they're able to do the things that they do because people, them white folks, donate to the Catholic Church. But you have a lot of black people that benefit. And I don't see any of them black, them black folks talking about these priests messing with little boys and doing other things that they should not be doing. Okay, but when it comes to people like Bishop Lamore Whitehead, oh, you guys want to crucify him, but I don't see any of you talking about Joe Biden or Joe Biden's son and that laptop, and you would turn around and go back to the polls and vote that criminal back in the office. See, you guys will vote Joe Biden. You support Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. And you will support Barack Obama. But yet you will crucify somebody like Bishop Lamar Whitehead or any other preacher that looked like he's doing good. Now, you got drug dealers living right in your neighborhood. Look at the cars they drive. Look at the, the gold and the jewelry around their neck. Look at the rappers, right? But yet, y'all ain't talking about them. Your mind is focused on people like Lamar Whitehead. Preachers can't look like that. But see, another thing, too, is you got people like Lamar Whitehead. I'm not saying he's defrauding people. I don't know that man's business. It's not my business. But you got pastors, man, that have side businesses. I know pastors that are still on their jobs because the church can't afford to pay them to come off their jobs. I remember a time, man, when with, with uh, preachers, you didn't really see the flashy preachers and whatnot. And then you had people on the outside, of course, talking about, you know, the, uh, they driving a pinto and, you know, how can you preach prosperity in the pie in the sky, you driving a pinto. You have to be an example. So now you got these preachers with these nice cars and, and boats and planes and all this jewelry, and now you're saying that they're pimps in the pulpit. Make up your mind. Either you want them to drive a pinto or you want them to look the look. See, I remember a white uh, Robert Tilton was a white preacher that the media caught him on one of his planes. And was trying to interview him and they was talking about what he had, you know, his boats and his, you know, all of his real estate and and Robert Tilton says he's not a hypocrite because he preached prosperity and he lives prosperity. See, and at one time they did this thing where they were they were um talking about preachers that had all this money and they were questioning, you know, do they really need all this and they're men of God and they're not supposed to have this. Well, a workman is worthy of his hire. And a lot of these preachers got side businesses. If you're a pastor and you get paid $250,000 a year, tax-free money, and you bank that money, you don't have to pay rent or utilities because the church pays that. Plus, the church gives you anniversaries. They give you birthdays. And they give you a lot of money when they do that. Sometimes they buy you cars, they buy you suits, they buy the pastor's wives things. A lot of y'all in the church, you know, you know how that work. They don't ask for that. Sometimes the pastors, they would get up and they would get greedy and uh, spoiled and they would ask for that stuff. And the members would get that for, for them. If you choose not to give, you choose not to give. 
So this pastor got like tax-free money in the bank so he may buy the things that he like. He may have a business on the side so he could afford to look that way. It's not that he's ripping off the church because the deacons or the trustees are the ones that take up that offering. They the ones that keep the books. If anybody's going to steal from the offering would be the deacons and the trustees. See? So they take up the offerings. The pastor, in many cases, don't handle the money. Of course, you have churches where the pastors do everything, but for the most part, the pastors don't handle the money. The trustees and the deacons, they handle the money. But the pastor is paid a salary. So if he looks, if he's out there flossing with these nice suits and cars, that's what his money buys. He can do that. See, he's not ripping nobody off. See, so you got to understand it, people, they give Lamar Whitehead, if he stand up and ask these people for money and they give to him, you know, they chose to do that. See? And again, it's no different than people asking money for cash apps and super chats and uh, go to my, go to my, whatever that page is, you know, that you want people to go to and watch you strip. And you got a lot of male prostitutes out there, man, YouTubers. That's got only fan pages. Only fan, a man, a dude with an only fan page prostituting themselves online. And then you got the audacity to talk about somebody like Bishop Lamore Whitehead. See, and again, I'm not defending the man, but it's just mind blowing to me that black people are the only ones that that celebrate in the uh, in the downfall of their own people. So I'm going to end it right there. Um, listen, I got a new uh, YouTube channel. And it's called Infinite Fearless. Infinite.fearless. And I'll put the link on the bottom. Go there and subscribe. Until next time, I'm fearless.